live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Red Hat Summit 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in San Francisco for the Red Hat Summit 2018 events, theCUBE's exclusive coverage. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE with John Troyer, my co-host analyst this week, who's co-founder of Tech Reckoning advisory and community development firm. Our next guest is Ranga Rangachari, Vice President, General Manager of Red Hat Storage. Great to see you again. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you for inviting me again. So as Dave Vellante said, storage is, is where all the action is, as well as data to be stored somewhere with the cloud. Yeah, it's still important. You guys have a new concept. Yeah. Unstorage. Yeah. Unstorage, what is unstorage? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think uh, essentially when we got into the storage business, the status quo was, your traditional storage mainframe, so wheel in a piece of gear and it scale up and have things, workloads running there. But with the movement towards cloud, especially with hybrid cloud, where you really can take a physical box and move it into a public cloud. And in the last year or so with containers, the common theme that's emerging is things like agility, things like scale, things like almost having ubiquitous storage all around the place is becoming more and more important. So our thought is, you know, it almost turns the storage, the phenomenon of storage industry upside down on its head, because the things that people cared about a decade ago on the workloads are no longer relevant or less relevant than where they are today. So, and you know, it seems to be, people seem to get it, so we are pretty Well, I mean, we've that. seen the trend on servers, server-less, yeah. storage-less. <laughs> so in, in, a, in a way, this is a resource pool. It so is. it's not just, you know, a box provision the lens. It's yeah. more like, okay, I need storage. Exactly. Press a button. I don't care where it comes from. Is that what we're kind of getting to? Is that what you That's mean? That's exactly what it is, right? I think in a, in, a, in a different way, right? One of the customers said, I want storage to be everywhere, but nowhere, right? In that they want storage to be pervasive, but it has to be invisible. So they don't have to worry about things like zoning and lens masking on one piece of hardware and do the same thing with 20 other pieces. What our solution offers, offers is truly a scalable, a storage platform that's running on any kind of footprint, physical, virtual, private, or public cloud, but it's a common user experience across all these different footprints. And that's why, and the other part of this thing, which is also different is, yes, it does appeal to the storage admins, but more importantly, as you become, as organizations evolve into cloud architects and DevOps, you know, what they care about is, look, I want storage to be as invisible as possible, but yet I want to make the dev developers more and more productive. So I think we are, I feel we are on the right track in appealing to how storage needs yeah. to be viewed. It's a no-brainer in my mind. If you're DevOps and you want to go total cloud, horizontally scalable, you need agile apps, storage just to be available, programmable, all that's great stuff. Question I have for you is, what's the impact of customers who have been buying boxes for decades? <laughs> so, what's the impact of them with Red Hat? So, I'm still going to need boxes and still got to put them somewhere, and so, if it's an on-prem cloud operations, I still need storage, if it's cloud, obviously, those guys have their own storage, but I mean, but you still got to plug it in and put storage in there. Sure. What's the impact of the customer? Well, I think the, I mean, we do, we are practical enough, and we realize that no customer is going to pull the plug one day and move on to the next infrastructure. What we are seeing more and more is as those new workloads, which are dramatically different than the previous workloads, as they come into play, then they have to rethink how they develop, deploy, provision, storage infrastructure. So that's where we come in. So it's not about an either or, it's about how do you augment your existing storage infrastructure. But think about it in a modern way. Think about how you can future-proof your architecture so that it scales. So that's the way we think about it. So Ranga, how should people be thinking about storage at different levels of the architecture? There's actually a lot of storage here. There's been a lot of sessions, even the Ecosystem Expo, there's a lot of storage providers. But you've got the, we've been talking a lot about OpenShift and, and OpenShift on OpenStack here at the show this, yeah. this, uh, this year. So if you're at the OpenStack layer versus uh, the OpenShift layer, how should uh, you be thinking about storage and, and, what, and what products are plugging in at those layers? Yeah, so you know, I think uh, with OpenShift, uh, a couple of days ago, earlier this week, we announced around 150 customers were actually deploying our product, which is called Container Native Storage, CNS for short. And what that does is it enables, it's essentially the storage infrastructure for OpenShift. So wherever OpenShift goes, the storage footprint follows along. Whether you're running it on-prem, on top of virtual infrastructure, or you're running any of these public clouds. And the most interesting part of that is, you know, getting back to the earlier conversation, we try to make it as invisible as possible. 
So you, we as vendors don't have to say, you got to deploy it here. So make it as invisible as possible and as seamless as possible. Now with OpenStack, it's a different set of uh, experience because that's kind of infrastructure up. Right, and the advantage for us is if you look at the OpenStack community in general, almost 70% of the OpenStack community in one way, shape, or form uses a Ceph project. So it's almost become, I wouldn't call it, uh, almost a de facto standard on how people manage the storage infrastructure with an OpenStack. But even there, the cardinal rules are still the same, which is when they think about spinning up a machine, the storage has to be attached automatically to it and then scale as the compute and the storage infrastructure scales. And this, the scale is the question. We're living in a new era of, of cloud economics. Scale is key and we hear the customers here at Red Hat, uh, Red Hat's customers talking about things like horizontally scalable, asynchronous, mic sets of microservices, levels of granularity. This is the programmable new fabric exactly. that is the new infrastructure of the internet. Yeah. You know, 30 year old stacks from e-commerce to DNS, you know, they're you know, going to be abstracted away with a new abstraction layer. Yes. You know, hello OpenShift, hello you know, new things, Kubernetes and, and containers. So with that being said, there's an opportunity. Yes. So when you, now that's kind of like the state of the art now, but you walk into an enterprise like, what's Kubernetes again? So you got some enterprises are learning about Kubernetes and it's good news for them. Yes. Learning about containers where they can, don't have to throw away anything, you just containerize it. How is that impacting the classic definition of software-defined data center yep. and software-defined storage? Because those are the two important trends that have been happening in software-defined. Yes. Does it accelerate it? Does it change it a little bit? What's your thoughts on those two you things? Know, I think it accelerates it, and here's why. That's a great question, right? Because when you look at organizations, especially in the container era, right, where there are certain companies who are actually, I would argue, even bypassing you know, and building a container-first strategy as opposed to a cloud-first strategy. Right, so that's, that's the way they're thinking about this. And when you talk about view through that lens, storage essentially is an application as opposed to infrastructure. So you have to talk S3 or you have to talk whatever protocol it is, so it just becomes part and parcel of that. So the, the challenge or what vendors or, or customers are looking at us is how can you make it as seamless as possible so that they can get the acceleration can happen. Because a year ago, I think nine months ago, there was a survey that was done where customers said the top two uh, issues with move to accelerated move to containers were storage or persistent storage and security. And I think we have a firm handle on what we need to do to really help our customers at least address the storage part of that discussion. And what's the, what, and what's the makeup of the use cases right now? How many customers are deploying this roughly order of magnitude? I mean, I don't have to go into details, but I mean, you know, you know how's the migration going? <laughs> Early adopters in mode now? Is it fast followers? Is it the rest I, of the market? I, I think it's still in the early adoption in the truest uh, definition. Uh, I think, you know, using the baseball analogy, we're at the top of the first inning, right? And uh, most of the workloads tend to be new workloads, right? There are some lift cloud and shift, native. cloud native, but there are some, but as far as the use cases, it is you know, across the board. You know, NoSQL databases, CICD, Jenkins type of environment, so we strive to support all It's not vertical centric either because storage is storage, it's used by everybody. Yes. There is one layer where there's certain ISV apps that tend to be yeah. focused on certain verticals, but they happen, right? Or but high availability or IOPS, you might need financial services. Or stretch clusters and all those kinds of things. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, I love the concept of unstorage, but that does leave in the cold a little bit the people that we used to call storage admins, <laughs> right? So now multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, a lot of examples and a lot of demonstrations. Storage operators. <laughs> <laughs> call well, them operators, well, and sure. well done. <laughs> does does the, the job of the storage, the person you who used to be in charge of storage, it seems like that, that changes now. Even with unstorage, uh, a lot of automation, a lot of uh, fabric, a lot of pooling does it yeah. itself, but you still are on a lot of different clouds and, and things like that. How, do you, how are you talking to customers about that? So, you know, I think uh, uh, one of the, uh, I think the term that people have started to use is generalist, right? If you look at it, you know, five years ago or seven years ago, you had a silo of systems administrators, storage administrators, and network administrators. Now the whole vertical si or the silos have been in a way normalized, so now you have a pool of people, might be the major is in storage, but the minor is in networking, might the major is in compute, the minor is in storage. So it really helped our, the organizations that we talk to, now they say, look, I have a collective pool that can help me where I need to get to. So this plays really well with 
the, that audience, absolutely, it does. And the hybrid cloud equation, and your thoughts there, because obviously Wikibon did a great piece of research on the true private cloud, and they, are, and they are looking for more folks to participate in the next set of surveys, so I'd love to introduce you to the Peter Burris over there, but the point is, was true private cloud report showed that on-premise cloudification, whatever you want to call it, action was much higher and growing. It's not so much on-premise has been dying or re being reduced, it's transitioning to on-premise cloud operations, yes. which, which is essentially cloud, right? Yeah. You can say it's a fat edge or you know, the cloud is, a, what is the cloud? So you're seeing still a lot of work being done on-premises where they're re recasting, reimagining cloud. So how is that impacting the hybrid cloud? Because hybrid cloud's not really a product, it's a, you know, it's a journey. It's a, it's a connection between yeah. two clouds. So storage data, the data plane, control planes are all kind of like evolving. Your thoughts on multi-cloud and as hybrid starts to accelerate, that's yeah. the path, obviously open shift, but your thoughts on... Um, so uh, the, I think uh, the way we think about this, right, is hybrid cloud is, it's not so much that everything is running on a, I, I absolutely agree with the research, right, but the customers that we talk to, they are still building their foundational business on, I got to you know, keep the private cloud, make it as seamless and as efficient as possible. But there are certain workloads that lend themselves well to running on a public cloud. Now it, it's not so much as a disjointed, uh, these two universes never talk to each other, it's how do we, as Red Hat, try to bring the two together so the user experience, you almost, in a way, try to minimize where it actually runs, right? Now, so that's, that's an OpenShift is a classic example of that, right? Where you're running it on-prem, uh, but you're also running it on these public clouds. There's certain workloads that are great on a public cloud. An example of that is one of the largest uh, airports in uh, Europe. So they use OpenShift on-prem, but they also use OpenShift on a couple of other public clouds. And our CNS product, which is a container nearly storage product, run, runs along all those three environments. So to the end user, it's essentially a seamless experience. So th and that's, you know, as the journey unfolds, I think that's what you're going to see more and more is about how do we start to, now that the storage foundation is built, how do we start to expose some data services that can run across all these different now That's going to be killer. So give us an update on the business. How's the business? What's the roadmap look like? What are the things that you guys are working on? What's the priorities? So businesses, you know, like uh, we announced on Monday, uh, 150 net new customers over the last um, 12 months, and that's just on one specific a strategic imperative which is container native storage or help the customers with the container journey. Besides that, I think there are two other pillars we are focused on. One is around hybrid cloud, right, which is how do you really provide the best storage substrate for customers building private clouds and hybrid clouds. And the third part is hyperconvergence. Because I think what our customers are asking for is they've seen the power of hyperconvergence, but they want an open source variant of hyperconvergence for that environment. And stay tuned on that front. We've got some exciting stuff going on, and uh, we'll keep you folks updated on that. Final question, what's going on in the show here for you? What's notable? Uh, for the folks that are watching who couldn't make it here, what's the vibe, what's the hallway conversation, what's the customer conversation? What's the, what, share some uh, color of what's happening here at Red Hat Summit here in San Francisco. So, a lot of things, but you know, I wish we had time, but I know we're short of time here, but a few, few things I want to highlight. One is all the technology demos that we did yesterday, today, and uh, some in the tomorrow, uh, tomorrow time frame, you'll see our container native storage or our storage portfolio be an integral part of every one of the teams that we're talking about. So that's, you know, and we've got very positive feedback on that. We have over two dozen tech sessions, and my understanding is, I don't go to those, my understanding is they've all been standing room only. So there is definite yeah. customer interest yeah. in where we are, what we're doing. So we, this show has been an awesome show for us. Yeah, storage is the gift that keeps on giving, and now it's going to be storage-less and unstorage, whatever word you want to <laughs> I like storage-less because it sounds like server-less, which doesn't mean anything either, but it sounds good, but you know, it's a pool of resource. Yeah. Congratulations. Exactly. Uh, it's a hot area, certainly having programmable infrastructure means better development time, and certainly making it you know, elastic and making it horizontally scalable is the dream we all want to get too fast. So, you there. More live coverage, bringing you all the action here in the, in the open, here at Moscone, right in the middle of the floor. This is the CUBE coverage of Red Hat Summit 2018. I'm John Furrier with John Troyer. Stay with us, we'll be back with more after this short break. Thanks, John.